Hey folks, welcome to our blending lesson today. So um, today's unit four, week five, where we are wrapping up that long E sound that can be spelled with either blank E-Y or blank Y. So remember when it's, there will, the, those blanks just mean that there will always be a letter or a sound that comes before it. All right, so let's practice high frequency words. So next week we're gonna start a brand new unit with a whole new group of high frequency words. So of course, make sure you're trying to be focused and you're paying attention. And of course, go back and review the video on your own time to really help you. Eight, give, blue, more, found, hard, woman, right, were, flew, no, find, small, our, animal, start, carry, other, because, over, would, near, right, listen, caught, laugh, warm, into, or, about, food. Excellent, let's do blending. Okay, first word, baby, your turn. Ba, a, ba, e, baby. So this word, baby, has two long sounds that you hear when you say it. When you say baby, you hear long A. It's the first sound that you hear, but A. But A, but E, baby. That is the long E sound. Okay. B says ba. And here's the long A. Remember we talked about how long A can be spelled with A by itself in this word baby. That's the case. And another B says ba, ba, a, ba. And in this word baby, that Y is spelled, um, or that E, I'm sorry, is spelled with a Y. Ba, a, ba, e, baby. Next word. Funny. Your turn. <sighs> uh, mm, e. Funny, funny. F says, thank you. And in the word funny, this U was a short U. Uh. And remember we talked about how in a lot of words that end with Y as their long E sound, it has a double consonant. Uh, mm, you just double up on that N sound. And Y will say E in this word. Uh, mm, E, funny. Okay. So yeah, that's not really the case in the word baby, but that kind of can give you a clue um, that it'll say that that Y might say long E. Because if you were to try to sound this word out with a ya, ba a ba ya, ba a ba ya, or ba a ba ya, ba a ba ya, that doesn't quite sound like a real word. So of course you just have to know that you can switch them. Next word, really, your turn, er, e. O, E, really, really. So when I say this word really, I hear long E in two places. So R says er, er, E. So we've already talked about how E, A can also say that E sound. That long E, yeah. Er, E. So there's a vowel team working together to say long E. And then here's another where there's Two consonants that double up say o, oh, and those two consonants are right next to that y. So another clue that the y will not say ya, it will not say i, it will say e, er e, o e, really. Next word, kitty, your turn, ka, i, t, e, kitty. A says ka. This is going to be short I in this word. So short I says i. Ka, i. And then another one where we double up on that consonant says ta. And when we say kitty, we hear long E at the end. So that long E is spelled with Y. Ka, i, t, e, kitty. 
Yeah, so like I've said before, this may just this may be a word that you've seen so many times that you don't have to sound out, and you just already know it. All right, next word. City. Your turn. S I T E. City. So this word is taking it back to that soft C that we learned, I think, in unit three. C says S. And also it can, C can also say the S sound, so you kind of kinda have to remember that one. And then this word city, that I is a short I. T says T. And then this word city, that Y does not say Y. It says long E. And remember, a blank Y, the blank here is just the T. S E T E. S oh, I'm sorry. S E T E. City. Sorry. So if you were to say this with a hard C and a short I, that doesn't quite sound right. So what if we tried to say this with a long I and a soft C? That doesn't sound right either. So of course, yeah, you got to be able to flip them around to see what fits. Next word, key, your turn, ka. E, key. So this word key uses the E-Y to say the long E sound. K says ka. And then E-Y, the blank E-Y is going to say the long E. And of course the blank is just a K. So K says ka, E-Y, making that long E. Ka, E, he. Word. Puppy, your turn. P, a, uh, p, e, puppy. So I think we had this one a couple days ago. P says p. And this word puppy, a u, a short u. And two p's, double up on it. Going to say p. And here's another clue that the that. The Y at the end of that word after the two consonants is going to say E, probably not going to say Y. Yeah. Pa, a, pa, e, pa, b. So it probably won't say Y yeah because then it would say pa, a, pa, ya, yeah. pa, pa, ya. Yeah. Or probably won't say long U. Pa, you, pa, ya, yeah. pa, you, pa. And that doesn't sound right. Next word, volley. Your turn. V, a, o, E, volley. So the word volley just means like with volleyball, it's a sport where you just kind of, when you're hitting the ball back and forth, you are volleying the ball back and forth. So a volley is just when you're hitting a volleyball to someone else. So V says V. And this word volley is a short O. Ah. LL, just double up on that sound, all, but in this word, volley, even though there's a double consonant, it is spelled with E-Y. It's a vowel team that works together to say long E, just like E-Y, vowel team here. v a l e volley. So like I said before with, um, with the I-G-H, E-Y, if they're together, they won't ever say their individual sounds. It'll always be E. It will not be aya, aya. Musty, your turn. M, a, st, e, musty. So musty just means that something kind of like smells off if it's if it's old, like it's been sitting in a box for a while. M says m, mm. and this word musty that u is a short u. M, mm, a. Uh, An S T S T S T. So if you see this word in a book and you're trying to sound it out, you you see that word there and it's like, oh, that's the word must. I know that word must. And then, oh wait, I see a Y at the end. So must ya, must ya? Uh, it doesn't quite sound right. Must I? Must I? Mm, that doesn't quite sound right. Okay, let me switch it to a long E. Just learned that. M A S T. E, musty. 
That might match the picture if, you know, the boys maybe smell something. Okay, next word. Seashell. Your turn. Sea. Sh. E. O. Seashell. So I broke that word seashell up into the, the word sea, like the ocean, and then the word shell. Okay, so S says S, and we hear long E in the word seashell. And in the word seashell, that long E is EA. Because we've learned that EA, one of the many ways to spell the long E sound. S E, that's like the ocean. Sh, the digraph that won't ever ever say saha, will always say sh. And then in this word seashell, that e is a short e. It says e, s e sh. And we double up on that o, s e sh e o, seashell. So this word might be easier to sound out, or you recognize it. When you see it in a book because it'll match the picture or because you've seen the word before. So this is called a compound word. We've talked about those a bit. So a compound word is just two words that come together to make one word. And these are two words that are separate words. They can be used in other sentences as their own words. So that is why it's a compound word. So when you're trying when you see it in a book you might you know see it oh see and shell. See, okay, that sounds like a word. See, okay, let me let me deal with the rest of the word. See shell, see shell. Oh, that matches the picture. They're on the beach and they're collecting shells. Okay, next word. Teapot. Your turn. Ta. E. Pa. A. Ta. Teapot. Yeah, so this word teapot. Got a lot going on in there. Another compound word. T says ta. And this word teapot, you hear a long E in the middle, and that's E A, that vowel team, just like seashell in teapot. It has that long E spelled with E A. T says ta. This O is going to be a short O. Ta E pa a. And T says ta. Ta e pa a t t pot. So again, this is another compound word because because these two parts of it, t and pot, they can stand on their own. They can be their own words in a different sentence. Um, but they are when you put them together, they do make a word. T pot. So again, if you're trying to sound this out, you may you might kind of come. You might be chunking them. Ta e Okay, T, P, A, T, P, A, T. All right, so let's read our blending board. Baby, funny, really, kitty. Your turn. Wonderful. City, key, puppy, volley. Your turn. Wonderful. Musty, seashell. Teapot, your turn. All right, wonderful. Let's do a sentence. All right, he says ta, beginning of a sentence. It's also going to be a name in this sentence. So short o. This o is going to be a short o. Ta a. We're going to double up on those M's. Mm, ta, a, mm. And since it's two consonants, you might be able to guess what comes next. Oh, yeah, a Y. And since it's two consonants and then a Y, oh, I bet that Y is going to say long E. Ta, a, mm, e, ta, me. Again, you may have seen that, that name a lot of different places. So you may not have to sound it out. So ta, me, L says O. In this word, the O is a short O, O-A. 
S T S T A S T A L A S T A Lost. Tommy lost. He lost something. H says ha. Short I in this word. I I. S says s ha is his. Tommy lost his. K says ka. And in this word, he e y is the vowel team that works together to say long e. Ka e he. Tommy lost his key. In. And if you're going to see word the. M says m. Mm, you, short you, is going to say a. Uh, mm, you. D. Remember, two consonants. We just double up on the sound. M, mm, a, uh, duh. Mud. So I bet with the two consonants, I think I might know what comes next. A Y. And since there's two consonants, that Y must say the long E sound. M a d e muddy. Tommy lost his key in the muddy. You can probably guess the muddy what where he lost his key. P says ha. Huh? In this word, the O that you see there is going to be a short O. Ha ah ah. And D, n, d, n, let's blend, ha, a, n, d, pawn. So I think what I, what I said the other day when we had a sentence similar to this is if you tried to switch this to a long O, because we know that long O can, because we know that O by itself can also say long O. If we tried to switch it, ha, o, n, d, ha, o, n, d, that doesn't quite sound right, doesn't match the picture. So again, you have to know that you can flip them. So let's read our sentence. Tommy lost his key in the muddy pond. Your turn. Wonderful. Okay, so we do need some punctuation. So for this sentence, I think you could have a period. You can always have a period at the end of a sentence, unless it's a question. So Tommy lost his key in the muddy pond. You could also have an exclamation point because this would, it would be something that's not so fun for Tommy. So he might... Or somebody who's with him, Tommy wouldn't say it about himself, but someone who was with him was like, man, Tommy lost his key in that muddy pond, so it's Tommy's going to have a hard time getting in his house. Okay. So, of course, you're writing it. Um, make sure you, if you're going to put an exclamation point, you say it with an exclamation point. So a noun, Tommy. Tommy's a person in our sentence. So Tommy's a noun. And pond, a place in our sentence. So pond is also a noun. Tommy lost his key in the muddy pond. Oh, yeah, key. That is some, something that hopefully Tommy's going to touch because hopefully he's going to find it. So Tommy lost his key in the muddy pond. And we have one verb, lost, because a verb is an action. It is what one of the nouns will do. And in this sentence, Tommy lost something. The key didn't lose anything. The pond didn't lose anything. So this verb is telling what this noun did, what Tommy did. And we do have an adjective, just like when Betty, I think her name was, went to the muddy pond the other day. Muddy is also an adjective here. And like I said the other day, if we took out the, the word muddy, it would still be a correct sentence. It would say Tommy lost his key in the pond, which is correct. The word muddy there just gives you more information. It helps you build a better picture in your head. All right, fantastic. So remember, go ahead and review this video on your time. Um, turn the sound off. Really help yourself. We'll see you later.